Hi there, it's Adrithi from HubSpot. I'm here to talk you folks through some of our more advanced marketing features, including some really slick automation. I think you guys are going to love it because the features we're talking about, of course, are gonna help you reach out to your future customers, but they're also gonna help you build really strong relationships with your sales team. So if that's what you're looking for, come join. HubSpot score is a property that can live on your contact, company, or deal record. And what it is, is a way to attribute points due to certain behaviors. So for instance, if someone visits my website three times, I can add five points. However, if someone hasn't opened any of my emails for the past two months, I can take away 30 points. And what we end up with is a score that helps us inform if this is a good fit customer for our sales team to reach out to. So I can go ahead and edit some of the actions here. So I can make it based on page views. If they have visited a certain URL, we can add in 10 points. And if the email was delivered to contact, but they didn't open it, maybe that's negative 10 points. Now, this is a really great way to use the data that HubSpot already has to help you and your sales team make informed decisions about who your best fit customers are. Another property that we have that is very similar to HubSpot score, but a little different is actually predictive lead scoring. Now, predictive lead scoring is an uneditable property that takes into account how likely a customer is to closing. Now, another property that I really wanna talk about is likelihood to close. Likelihood to close is the probability that a contact will become a customer within the next 90 days. And HubSpot is able to configure this number for you based on a series of events that they look at, such as page views, if they've opened emails, the last activity they've taken, and a bunch of other things. Because HubSpot has such a robust reporting system behind this property, it's actually not editable. So HubSpot score is editable. You can assign your own points based on certain behavior, but likelihood to close isn't editable and HubSpot does the heavy lifting for you. So just keep that in mind when you are debating which property to use. So you might be asking yourself, okay, I love these properties, but what do I actually use them for? And to that, I say workflows. Now, workflows are one of our most used and most robust features in the entire HubSpot platform. We could talk for days and days about workflows if we wanted, but some workflows that I really recommend, especially using those properties that we just talked about, HubSpot score and predictive lead scoring, is to inform your sales team when a specific contact or company reaches a specific score. That way your sales team gets notified that, hey, maybe this is someone that we need to reach out to right away. So in order to make that workflow, go ahead and click when filter criteria is met and the contact property HubSpot score is greater than 10. Once we have that, we can set up an internal email notification that goes to our sales team and I can write that email here. This way, I'm ensuring that all the hard work that we're doing on the marketing side is getting translated and our sales team are reaping the benefits. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about in this video is account-based marketing. That's another really big way that marketing and sales work together. And Workflows is a great way that these two teams can work together to make sure that they're reaching out to the right customers. So. As many folks know, the first thing that you need to do when establishing an account-based marketing strategy is to define your ideal customer profile and workflows can help you do that. So here's a workflow that I've already created that walks us through what our ideal customer profile is. So as you can see, we have folks with a greater annual revenue of 1 million who live in the United States. They're gonna be our tier one ideal customer profile. However, if those folks have an annual revenue that's less than 500,000, then maybe they're tier two and tier three folks. Once we have defined our ideal customer profile through workflows, we can actually create another workflow that says for all of the folks who are in the tier one ideal customer profile, let's send them a marketing email that's a little more specific to their needs. So 
if the ideal customer profile is any of tier one, we are going to send them an email and I get to preview it, looks perfect, and I'm gonna click save. So now I have a workflow here that says, if my contact is in this ideal customer profile tier of tier one, I'm gonna send them a marketing email. Now, whatever happens with that marketing email, then that might change my HubSpot score, that might change my predictive lead scoring, and I've already set up automation so that then my sales team can get notified if they fall into that certain score. So there's a lot of marketing and sales communication that we can do through workflows to make sure that both teams are on the same page. All right, so with these marketing tools, you're able to create a great experience for your future customers, but also bridge the gap between marketing and sales. If you are looking for more tips and tricks similar to this one, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel below.